people. What's up, people? Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Cup Chasers podcast. It's been uh, a rough, a rough weekend, at least for me, in the Premier League. And uh, I know Liverpool fans will be feeling the same. But Manchester City, Lewis, sit top of the table, looking in pole position to repeat all of the crazy success of last season. Chelsea, what happened at Stamford Bridge today? 6 0. Cold Palmer absolutely killing it. 20 goals. Man, right now. Only Thor has uh, can claim the same number of goals as Mr. Cold Palmer. It uh, has definitely been a weekend of shifting tides, some crazy things. I'm happy Spurs lost 4 0. That was nice. Always a good day. That was good. Uh, Manchester United, once again, looking awful, facing lots of shots and somehow, uh, you know, stealing points. Well, uh, considering that they lost the last time they faced Bournemouth, maybe this is a step in the right direction for them. A step in the right direction. Uh, I don't know, though. Garnacho getting thrown under buses and all that. Uh, kind of stuff, like in tweets, you know, there's the usual stuff over at Manchester United. And of course, it's Champions League in the week. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. So right out the rip, let's get the likes up on the video. It's definitely going to be a fun one tonight as well. Subscribe if you're new. Of course, thanks for being here. We're on our way to the magical 1000. And get the little notification bell on if you're enjoying all the content. All right, here we go. Recency bias. Patrick, what you telling me? Chelsea have absolutely decimated Everton, who you might think are, yes, they're terrible. They're languishing down in the bottom of the league. They're getting points deductions thrown at them. They're making appeals. It's craziness. But I was looking at their stats. They have the fourth had. 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 The fourth best defense in the league. And Chelsea, not necessarily the best offense. Six goals. What you tell me? Well, first off, it's glad, I'm glad to be back with you guys. Uh, I will say It has that been a couple of episodes, hasn't it? I have. I missed a whole week. I apologize about that. Um, I, do, I, I do need to go back and rewatch my rant through you to see how how well it came across. Oh, I did. I did read it with some emotion, didn't I, uh, didn't I, Lewis? <laughs> so I'll have to go back and watch that um, or listen. Um, today, wow. Uh, I don't know what to say. First off, I don't, I don't know what Everton was doing. There was so much space. Like, just yards and yards of space and you're, and you're like, they're going to close this down, right? Like eventually this is going to end and it, it never ended. Um, you know, I, I don't, I will say that the Pochettino did set up a pretty attacking lineup. I didn't expect this, of course. Um, Cole Palmer with back to back hat tricks at the bridge. Uh, first player to do it in the same season ever. Uh, for Chelsea, second player really I'm do it behind Mr. Didier throw, but, but he did it over two seasons. So I guess I think that was a year that we won like nine nothing to end the season against like Wigan, and then we came back and did the, did the deed to start the season the next year. Um, yeah. uh, I really, I, I mean, it was fun to watch. I, I can't lie about that but it was also kind of flabbergasting because we never have that much space like never have that much space usually you've got you know players getting it it was kind of funny it felt like they they gave everybody space except for for mudrick and he didn't play well at all he should have had a couple assists mind you but uh he didn't play that well today um cuckoo was you know the difference don't you huh you know the difference, don't you? Somewhat, yeah. <laughs> Who was missing? <laughs> well, Enzo was missing. But I also exactly. think it took away the exactly. idea of trying to play two box-to-box midfielders. 
I, I don't know what it is with, with Pochettino wanting to play them those two as box-to-box midfielders. He's come out and said he wants to play them as two box-to-box midfielders. It, no, it doesn't work. Um, so, you know, one guy said he'll have more freedom. He, I thought he was fantastic today. Great game. Yeah. He was tackling everything. Uh, he had one little slip, um, on a pass, but, uh, other than that, I, I didn't have any issues with him today. Um, I even, I even applauded him trying to take that shot, even though it was never going in. I'm like, yeah, just at least take it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no Enzo. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm pointing that out because I think it was a major factor in the freedom. Uh, and see, and know, that's the that thing. Gave I, don't, team. I don't get why. Well, it feels like that you you play Connor, you play uh, Palmer, you play Enzo, you play Caicedo. You're just clogging the middle of the of the field. I mean, that's what it feels like. Um. Today you 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 didn't do that, and also you didn't play Sterling, which also kind of frees up some things because he likes to come more central. It feels like, um, and then you know I thought that that um, defensively we were pretty solid. Uh, it was good to see Gusto back. Um, he played well. Cuckoo, I, I, I'm telling you, I thought Cuckoo played really well. He covered every back post run. Um, I think there was one chance they maybe could have gotten off of him, but even then it wasn't really that big of a chance, uh, on their goal that was disallowed. It was a great line. Um, everybody was literally even with each other and Beto was a good, you know, two feet off, uh, or maybe a yard or so off. I, I don't know. Um, I was glad we got the kids to play some, uh, Cassidy finally played Gilchrist with like childhood dream coming true with a goal. Uh, and it was a that's good the thing. way I would celebrate. That's the way I would celebrate. Oh, you know, yeah. X, that's the X. That's the way you would celebrate too. Even oh. a sixth goal Don't in a care. six nil. You, I've been down 6 1 and celebrated a goal. Like, don't care. <laughs> I can don't attest care. to that. Right. No, but it was his first goal for the club. That's why he was Damn. freaking out. Absolutely. Oh yeah, it was it was awesome. And uh, but it was good to see the kids get get a run out. Um, uh, I think we had like three or four academy players on the bench today. Oh, we always um, have three or four on the bench. Huh? This season we In, always have injuries. Three. Yeah, I was about to say with this season we always have at least three or four. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um. Well, if you're according to Posh, that's why the squad's so deep. So you know. Yeah. So walk walk me through that first goal, because because that was some oh, some sick that stuff. Was dirty. <laughs> oh, it was absolutely, absolutely dirty. Palmer woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Well, the right side, but the wrong side of the bed this morning, man. At least for Everton. <laughs> <laughs> At least for Everton, that's for sure. He chose the little the pullback, the pullback, and the and the the Cruyff cut behind the guy to Jackson, who, by the way, I think deserves credit for, because he stumbled and fell over. Yeah, but he got it over. able to get the pass strong enough to get it across Palmer onto his left. And he had a pretty good goal today, too. Um, fin- yeah, very good finish. Very good, very good finish. finish. Uh, he could have had two uh, if he didn't hit Pickford right in the face. Um, <laughs> but it just allowed... Just a lot, yeah. You're right. Palmer yes. was terrible. Palmer could have had two more. Awful, he really awful. could. <laughs> awful, hey man, tied to the golden boot, baby. Terrible miss, <laughs> terrible miss. Uh, when he should have completed the hat trick the first time and it goes off of his thigh in the middle, it was of the, the back of his thigh. No excuses. <laughs> you usually, hey, bum, he's a, he's a bum. He can't even score from two yards out. Um. I have a Palmer jersey coming. You're gonna stop. I bet right you do. I bet right you now. do. I have the mint one. I have the I have the Eton nice. blue Palmer, baby. Yes. Can't wait. But yeah, no, after this game, I'm happy to get that jersey. Cause like Bro, yeah, Here's you the see question. Me. This is the first time I've worn a jersey all season, bro. I had to is, put it on out of respect for the sixth place run. Sixth place run. X, is is he the is he the hopium though? Is this the uh, the devil in disguise? Because I was 
remember what I said in the chat earlier? Is Palmer going to keep Potch in a job for another season? Look, man, if Palmer, if they can, if he could just stop being Swiss cheese and has a goal scorer like that, that you're, you're going to feed, I'm down with it. But yeah, you got to stop play the Everton every, like, you that's play the Everton biggest every issue. Oh, I know. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. I want to see this kind of offense, high octane, <coughs> in your face, got the ball, the first goal's class, second goal's decent, Jackson's goal's class, like, oh, this is what I want to see. And this is what Posh has, like, had the brilliancy of it, but, dude, you got to stop the leaking, But which we did today, but, again, not every, not every week's going to be Everton. Mm-hmm. But if we take They've only away... scored more than Sheffield. Only Sheffield right. have scored less right. than Everton. I didn't expect to get scored on. I really didn't. Um, but that's the issue. Actually, with actually, game. actually, we have rec- we have it on record that you it did expect to get scored on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you can bet that Pochettino is going to give a goal. Someone on that defense <laughs> is going to give a goal. But like, this is what I'm saying though. Like, I like what he's done with the offense. It's just that he can't stop the bleeding at the back. And yeah, we have a lot of our injuries are at the back. I'll give him that. But no, bro, it does not matter. You shouldn't be giving goals to Sheffield United. You shouldn't be giving goals to these. Again, man, they seem like tax write-offs to me. I don't under, I don't have any other way to explain it. But I felt like we dominated today. We went out and did our job. We went out and did our job early. We went out and did our job well. I do not like seeing the boys bicker over who's going to take a PK. That ba- that baffles me so much. They're, That's they're still kids, though. Right. They're kids, man. I don't care, bro. You give that How ball to Palmer. Connor? How old is you Connor? You give the ball to Palmer. He's about to tie her. He's about to tie my man for Golden Boot. You give it to him. That's out of respect, out of the team. I, I disagree. I disagree with. I disagree with that reasoning. Palmer's the penalty taker. That's why you give it to Palmer. But sure. also, how old is how old is Connor? 23, 24. He had the armband, right? How old is Jackson? How old is Mad- Madweka? Uh, Jackson's 22. Madweka is like 19, 20. 21. And Palmer's yeah, 21. Not- so yeah. even though Gallagher is senior by being 23, they're all kids. Yeah. So that, for me, even though the media is going to freak out about that, it's nothing. Like it's. Nothing. I think it's a competitive spirit. I, I mean, I hope it's competitive spirit. That's it's what Palmer said not, in post match. That's what Palmer not, said in his yeah. post match interview. Not dissension. That's what I hope. I, it is. I hope it's not dissension. I think it's competitive spirit. But that's on Posh as well, bro. He's our PK taker. If he doesn't give you the ball, you don't get the ball. You lay that. You have to lay down the law right then. Well, that's what I'm saying. That no one was listening to Connor because they're all kids anyway. That's well, they're point. all kids anyway, right? They're not going to. What'd you think, Lewis? What'd you think about Chelsea today? I was proud of him, man. You know, I, you. I, I was on the train. You know, I've, I've stayed on the train where I, I, I've always kept some optimism about their their. Uh, Me too. Sixth place, baby. I, I didn't. Sixth I didn't, place. I didn't see. What did they score? Five or six? Six. 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 six I didn't. Baby. See, I didn't see six goals today, but. Uh, you know, it, it was it was something. I don't know what I predicted. I think I pre- predicted them to win them, and uh, uh, I, it's you just did. good. I, I've I've seen you know there's it they Chelsea's season has literally been the right games come up at the right time, and then they find a way. Now the issue that with that is that Pochettino then kind of burn some of his goodwill in the next match. <laughs> but, you know, you, you look at, like, you, you think about it in the game that they, uh, in the in the cup semi, I think it was the cup semi, that was a two-legger, right? And they, they had a rough first game, yeah. and, then, and then they had to win, and all of a sudden, Poach... You mean where they lost to Middlesbrough? Yeah. But then the next game, they came <laughs> out... Yeah. But the next game they came out and you're like, well, this is the Pochettino we was looking for. And they do that. And then they have they, they have games when they play against the big teams and they turn on. I think these guys literally feel like if it's not like a do or die thing, they, they don't show up. And that's really a mentality thing. But I think it's it's sort of, you know, obviously they're they're green. So. You know, it's just a matter of sprouts. I wouldn't even say they're green. All of these guys want to be the man. 
and because they all want to be the man it's it's about figuring out you don't have to be the man or you can be the man in moments and if you're the man for 10 minutes to help to guide the team you get what you get now obviously you know your point about everton being a pretty stingy defensive team says something to them and i think chelsea can go forward and and feel positive about what's going on i know for sure uh i know the joke is like you know the the, the strategy is give the ball to cole palmer i mean low-key Tilly, Tilly I, I think you, you that was our strategy cool. with hazard give the ball to eden he's gonna score we'll ride on that make it work i Let's mean if messi's gonna if messi's gonna dump 91 goals not saying Palmer is messy, but if but if Homie is dumping goal after goal after goal after goal, he's got seven goals in two games. Yeah, yeah. guess who's yeah. getting the ball, bro? Give, give him the ball, yeah. Guess who's getting the ball, bro? I mean, when he's doing Croy cuts behind the back to to this man, and then just nutmegging that's... people, and yeah, yeah, man. Well, you know, it's it's just a matter of hopefully, you know, they keep they keep the momentum that they have going. Uh, in the league, and they can uh, figure their way out because the teams above them are playing, uh, eh. and this is the right time for them to do it. I mean, it's it, it does do do your point that it, it bails Pochettino out because what he, he didn't. I'm gonna be honest. He, I don't think he had an epiphany or a light. I think these boys just came out and said, "We want to win." And, and then, because I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what's so terribly different about strategy, right? Outside of some players being missing, but even then, the players should be smart enough, wise enough, experienced enough to be like, okay, when I do this, this happens. And then we've watched film, and I, I guess they watch film. And when we do this, this happens. And somehow you can't replicate that. That's 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 something else. So I think. Uh, Pochettino hasn't changed. Uh, we, I, I congratulate Chelsea and their fans for their their win today, because we already know that Everton, it already it has the whole we they're gonna go down. We want to make sure they go down, so they want to make sure Chelsea is a part of that. You know. Well, I mean, I think one of the things because I was just looking at um, the lineup being released. Uh, Connor Gallagher is not a ten. No, but we've known that forever. Right, right. Well, it's because my man's trying. To, my man's been playing three to center defensive mids all season and trying to be like, make it work. Yeah, <laughs> like like Connor Gallagher is not a ten, and so <clears throat> he's playing back. You got Enzo who plays a little bit forward, and Caicedo who gets left out, and it, it just gets all jumbled. And there was space today because Connor Gallagher wasn't trying to play as a 10. He was playing as a, as a center midfielder, but he was playing back. And, I mean, I've been arguing for it for a while now. Like, you got to figure this out. You know, he's not a 10. He's never been a 10. He's never going to be a 10. He doesn't have that style. He doesn't have that, you know, ability. And, you know, I'd rather him sit back and play defensively or hold the ball, at least, and create space. Because, I mean, if you if you go back and watch the highlights, there's there's space all over the place. Is that down to is that down to Everton being all over the place or more so because of what you're saying? Because of what you're saying, yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, truthfully, um, there was space for Jackson. There was space on the wings. There was space in the middle. And I think some of that was because players were not trying to play on top of each other. You know? And, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, we're six minutes in. Metaweke with one-on-one off of a just a, just a break. But there was tons of space there, space that we haven't seen all season. And I think it's because Connor Gallagher played further back. And we could say what we want to about Enzo. I I think they're both, 
you know, I think all three of them just don't seem to mesh. Um, but there's just so much space that there, there has to be because he was playing more further back, which loosened up some things in the midfield. I mean, we just played a pass out to, to Cole. He, oh, this is where he scores. But, I mean, he, he had space to nutmeg a guy, dribble around another one, and then pass it off to Nico. If Connor Gallagher is playing in that space, it's clogged. Well, he never does that. He, he's never pulling that thing. And your point no. about space, I think, is also – so that first goal was, like, pure class – he didn't really have space. He just beat two dudes at once yeah. with a clever flick and then scored. And then after that, there was in loads of space because Everton can no longer sit in a low block. True. But, I mean, I'm watching it right now. He, he beats Branthwaite, I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a player coming up on him, but he still has the ability to dribble around. He hits the He hits the flick. You know, gotta gotta have the, the style points. But I know if Connor Gallagher is playing as the ten, there's no space for him to to play that ball into for him to score. There's just not. And so so the question moving forward is will Potch stick to keeping one of those perfect trio out? so that this can be replicated? I don't think so. So as soon as Enzo's healthy, right back in. Probably. Do you uh, want to see this again? I wouldn't if mind it. If we're going to score goals, I know we're not going to score like this. But if just, what if, what if I say to The style we played today was, was visually pleasing for me. Do you I mean, think just, Enzo could do what Caicedo did or Gallagher could do what Caicedo did so Caicedo could rest and come out? I think Gallagher could do what, what Caicedo did. So <clears> moving <throat> forward, that might be something for next season or is, Ca is Connor just – he's definitely gone. Connor's I, gone. Think, I think with us keeping – with us having Lavia, Connor's on the way out. Connor has to be on the way out because they're going to sell – they're, they're going to – again, it's sheep – is sheep to the slaughter. So did this matter? Yes, points yeah. wise. No, I know it matters. I know it matters points wise, and for your season, and you're definitely back in it because United suck and West Ham are inconsistent, etc. But as far as like my overall view of Chelsea's future, and if Poch is going to be out anyway, is it at this point? It's just we have just try to win whatever. If however, Posh, however it happens, we're just trying to make something in Europe. If Posh can make, if Posh can topple City, because now their sights are focused on some other issues. If Posh can topple City and come in six, I believe he keeps his job. Bro, there's no way. Well, I, I mean, he's he also assuming that everybody else wins as well. So, you know, you. It's not really the whole half the win out thing, which I'll I'll get to in the, the league. city's not letting this one go, bro. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, that's well, not he's referring talking. he's referring to the FA Cup. I'm, I'm referring to next uh, weekend. Yeah. Well, I'm talking, but I'm talking about in in general about games, but we'll get. There. I just think I think if if Posh is able to do that, he saves his job. It saves the season, which subsequently saves his job. That's what that's that was where I was coming from with. That's what I truly if Cole, believe. If Cole Palmer carries you guys, yeah, bro, to, Hazard, to Hazard did it once. William did it. William did it for us. Hazard's done it for us. Palmer can do it for us if he does. Speaking of Hazard, I heard an interesting debate about Salah and Hazard earlier today. Oh, um, oh, oh. Hazard in his prime. Hazard. Hazard. Hazard in his prime all day. Hazard in his prime all day. Yeah. Well, that's a whole no it's a whole other thing, and it, and it got into like, what's your metric? You know, like if you want, because somebody said, oh, well, Hazard he didn't train, he wasn't a team player, he no. didn't really work hard. No, you know? he's playing Mario and then, Kart. And then the Chelsea, the Chelsea fans, the Chelsea fan comes back and says, 
yeah, but uh, <laughs> when we when we needed something, he's like, I'm gonna go win this game. Thanks, guys. Yep. Bye. Yep. Bye. Exactly. I watched. And, I watched. The and is that more important at the end of the day? I well, watched well, the compilation of because he had that uh, X factor. He had the X factor goals, to win games. His I'm, goals and his his impact in games, and and I came away and it, one I totally forgot about some of them. But when Chelsea really needed it, and Hazard was put <coughs> on the back, and, all right, we're getting it one way or the other. You you need me to do a brace today? You got it. You need me to hit a you know <clears throat> hit one to to keep Spurs from winning the league? You got it, man. Got it, man. <laughs> put the whole league on his back that day. Yeah, I my my answer to that is that while I would pick Hazard, I, I'm a disagree with with that point because it, the, at the end of the day Salah has won everything and he and, and being the focal point I mean he, he didn't face the same kinds of fouls and things like that but Hazard came in where everyone expected him to do that and he did it right everyone he came in everybody from Lille everybody's like this guy and everybody saw it right what didn't Hazard win Hazard at Chelsea, well. at Chelsea, other, didn't than win other than a ch- he won the Europa. But then, League, okay. but then that's the point. But that's the he point. He won the Europa. Yeah, Salah enough, hasn't done enough, that, has he? But that's but that's the point I'm making, though. I mean, they don't, no one cares about Europa. He, did, he ended up winning a, a champion. The, the, tro- the tro- when it comes to trophy <laughs> counts, that's, that's, when it comes to the greats in trophy counts, when do you hear Europa League trophy getting? Yeah, I, like, I get it. I get it that it's like big trophy and, and, and it's like a stronger trophy or whatever it's a pretty big one i'm not discounting the europa league i'm just saying when we're counting trophies amongst ronaldo messi the greats no they're not counting europa messi never won the europa league like because he was never in it that yeah, it was is a better Lata statement Lata that's a better anyways. statement than saying oh yeah, i won a europa league oh that. no i never had to play in the europa league i understand that sala is playing in the europa league and he won't win it no not this season so, so oh, anyway, what, what, when presented what, 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 with the chance, Hazard went out and did the tournament he was able to do. Hazard wasn't yeah. a part of a Champions League run. But that was coming for Hazard. That's, <laughs> that's, that's kind of the point I'm making, though, because the point being, pretty sure my even, got two. The the point being, even with oh, you know good. Chelsea having the inconsistencies and stuff. Mo Salah was when they brought him into Liverpool. The, 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 I mean, he was at Chelsea. He was the reject, so he was already playing against sort of the system. Nobody expected him to be anything at um, at Liverpool. And then it was like, oh, he's a up with Fiorentina, though. He, but but again, but again, let's 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 look at how the the, the the framing of it was. He was tearing it up in another league. He comes to Chelsea. He was the Egyptian Messi because I remember hearing all that. He was the Egyptian. Oh, Messi. not at Chelsea. No, when he was when he came to Chelsea, it was from Basel. Well, but that the, the point I'm right. making is, is when he came in, people were calling him the Egyptian Messi. It's like, hey, this guy is fantastic. He's the Egyptian Messi. He gets at Chelsea, and he was bad. We're not going to pretend he he probably would own. He was bad there. He was really bad, and so then he left again, and then he played in Italy, and he tore it up, and so. What basically it showed is that this guy is good, but where he was at wasn't working for him. He goes to Liverpool, and the, the idea is, well, he's tried to come to the Premier League before, and he failed. So he's not going to be better than that. He's just he's just the guy. And then you saw him come in, and Liverpool – now, this is Liverpool that, that, that was just – you know, they were top seven. They weren't good. Salah being at Liverpool literally elevated them where they were top two for most of the run he was there. And we, we can't pretend that's not real. So if, if, we, if, if we act like that what Salah did is less than Hazard, that's just flatly wrong. And so, again, I would take Hazard, but if we look at what Salah's performance was in the league, Salah – Generally, I mean, people were afraid of Liverpool because of him. And, I mean, you were afraid of, of Chelsea because of Hazard, but it wasn't the same fear. You didn't expect, like, it, it, Jake said it recently, Salah's an inevitable. Like, 
even today, he still incites that same fear. And so when Liverpool went on their run, they, they, Salah was the, the person they dropped it on their back to say, hey, they scored 99 points. Hey, they scored 98. This is Mo Salah. And so, I mean, while, again, Hazard was amazing, Salah was always the focal point on his – if City didn't exist, Salah is historic. And, and we can't pretend like he wasn't. And so when he did win the Champions League, that, think about the season they had when they won it. They were monsters that year. Mm-hmm. And so while no, I, I was the Spurs to win that, I, I, I respect yeah. real shame. Well, but but I'm talking about the year in hold because we have to take the year in hold. There was no question Mo Salah wasn't yeah. the best player that year. Yeah. And the thing about it was whenever expectations were put on Mo Salah for him to deliver, he did it every single time in a Liverpool shirt. Every time. Well, I was reading something, and I'll have to go find it, but he was talking about how Sala goes ghost. Um, and, like, he's gone, like, seven games without a goal or something like that. Um, Do we want to just transition into the Liverpool section now? Yeah, we can. Are we talking about him going ghost this year? or No, over, over time. Hold on. I'll find it. Give me a second. I mean, do you have any more to say on the Chelsea game? It was great, amazing. Uh, did you, you realize that, that, that uh, the um, the uh, hat trick was a perfect hat trick? Yeah, left foot, header, right foot. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely, my man's gonna win absolutely. the golden blue, golden blue, and we're going in sixth place. The golden blue, nice. <laughs> yeah, um, going in sixth place. Here, here is your perfect transition. Hopefully, Mister Cold Palmer can reach these heights. All right, Liverpool, awful, wasteful. Mo Salah, ghost mode, at home. Taking notes. Did you find it, Patrick? I'm looking. So, yeah, uh, Liverpool were really, 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 really not great uh, at home. That's two games where Klopp (laughs) has said, yeah, we were not good today. Yeah, um, it was was pretty rough. I actually watched the whole thing, and in in gleeful, just joy. Uh, but um, we all know how that turned out for me. But yeah, they missed a ridiculous amount of shots, and this is what actually started that conversation. I told you about that. I heard was the fact that someone claimed he doesn't doesn't show up in the running. Mo Salah, that is. And then, of course, stats were brought out to debunk this fact because he's he's gotten lots of goals. He's gotten more than five goals and more than five assists, I think, in every run-in that he's been a part of. And well, this most, wasn't a solid stat, but they've gone nine games without a clean sheet. Liverpool? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they've never been great defensively. Like, we're not going to pretend like they're good defensively like that. No. Right. No. Pal, speaking of good defensively, Palace. I know everyone's talking about Liverpool and you know and the bottle jobs and uh, you know and dropping stuff and throwing stuff away, you know because that just seems to be the theme of the day, uh, you know at least for the you know the red teams here. But um, I think that Palace absolutely deserve credit for this one, man. They defended like absolute heroes dude um anderson back there man um nathaniel klein who used to play for liverpool had a fantastic game um mitchell on the other side had a fantastic game these guys dude liverpool definitely were wasteful definitely missed a lot of chances but these dudes goal line clearances left and right just like heroes man heroes this is especially like i expected the exact opposite of this i expected klopp to be like yo we just took a three nil really at home we just took a three nil who's who's next on the chopping block somebody's about to get got like i thought it was coming man you know what i mean i did not expect like this hangover flat performance at all i'm shocked 
I was I was very shocked. It's typical. It is typical of Liverpool this season to give a goal, you know, excuse me, early in a game and be sloppy and, you know, they were very sloppy. So, uh, sloppy Sly, I mean, uh, Saba Sly was not good at all. Um, I thought McAllister was probably their only, you know, decent performance in the middle, but. He's been consistent this year, at least. Yeah. Nunez. Noodle, Noodles had a nightmare. He did. Diaz, Diaz missing chances. Salah. Yeah, he's he's. I think he's. If he's not on the wane, you know, if he's not already there, he's definitely on the wane. I know he still puts fear into defenses, and he can still have a bad game and pop up with the goal and the assist and and all this. But like some of these chances that Liverpool are missing, it's like wow. Yeah, you would wow. expect him to, to uh, finish. You know, I actually I texted Yeldarb. I said, uh, "Oh man, the wheels of the wheels have come off," and I think the football gods took notice. Yeah, <laughs> I think the football gods were like, "Oh yeah, hold well, the, he, hold my beer." <laughs> you know, the funny thing about about this game is that um, uh, I, I know I sent it to you guys in the chat that Crystal Palace um, scored early on City. So it wasn't like they weren't up for their team, the teams they're playing. It was just a matter of they looked at what what was coming back at them, and, and Liverpool looked dead, man. And you know, uh, one of my buddies, uh, Billy, a shout out to Coach Billy. Um, he he was saying um, he's a Liverpool fan. And he's like they look like they 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 didn't have any energy. Like they just looked dead on their feet. And you know he's 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 never been a delusional Liverpool fan, so I'm gonna trust that. And you know, I mean, I've said it probably a couple of times where I just didn't trust them. Like you could see several times where they weren't great, and we're like, and we were asking, how are they there? And you know, it just it it just it proves because, I mean, we all looked at the Klopp retirement tour, but then we still saw chinks in the armor. They were still giving up goals to people early, and they were still down to people. And we were like, are, are they really in this? And th now this season, That's the one, Patrick. This Sorry, season, go ahead. Yeah, I, I saw the tweet, the original t tweet about it. That's what I was trying to find, yeah. and then he was reading it off, and I was like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. My bad. Go ahead, Lewis. The season is far from over. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, it's – they they already are and the thing is they were they were running off of vibes not off of quality tough fight no i i agree I, I definitely said that i i figured they would uh drop off and um you know i was hoping it would be the united game and, and it was and then it's just been sh it's just been shocking stuff since then and uh <clears throat> Well, you know, it could, I it could have been worth it. Like, I don't understand why Klopp's doing this now unless he's like trying to rally them to finish strong. And I think there's a lot to that now that we look at it. Um, you know, like you said, they went off of vibes. Um, you know, there for a while, they were like, uh, I think that tweet I just said, you said, they were scoring goals for fun, you know. Um, but eventually what happened was is after the Carabao Cup, it was like, okay, now what? And they really haven't gotten back out of neutral almost, it seems like. And even if the, in the in the Carabao Cup, I mean, I don't think they like smoked Chelsea. They were No, they, no. They were just okay, no. man. Like they weren't Chelsea like, laid down. Chelsea bro, laid down. They, they weren't like good. Like they didn't beat you. Beat you. <clears throat> I, 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 ne I never saw it, man. Virgil Van Dyke scored off the same goal twice. Only one of them counted. Twice. And Raheem Yo. Sterling was offside. And Raheem Sterling was offside by a fingernail. So I don't even want to talk about that game. Do you guys realize how close we were to another Gerard slip? Oh yeah, it was there. If Mateta puts that home. 
It could be a Virgil Van Dyke slip instead of the it's the the Virgil Van Disney slip of the, the week Virgil, instead oh, of the Gerard slip of the week. Just absolutely cursed. Oh man, I saw it. I saw the headlines. Just like you know those you know when you see it going across the across your eyeballs like a vision. It's like man, and then he's missed it, and I was. Like, <sighs> you need them, Baba. That's why. I think that, I cel- I think I celebrated too much during the Liverpool game. Like I think I got too excited and, the- and I was punished. <laughs> yeah, I was punished for it. But you know, it's interesting. Like they 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 took a three nil. We had Atalanta. That's how you say it. One nil to Palace. They hadn't lost to Palace in like seven years or something like that. Like, are the wills falling off? Like three, you you just you haven't lost at home in like fifty nine matches, and you lose two in a row where you don't score. Like, but well, here's the the thing. Like, I think we talked about this in the past. Rock and roll football wears you out, of and course. and we all know that, and we've talked about it that seven years with Klopp is when he normally leaves. He stayed an extra one. This was supposed to be a transition year where a new manager would have been taking over and it would have been in a new system, which means you would have revived and revitalized the rest of the team. Think about how many significant players that will be leaving Liverpool this year. And and it'll be while I don't think it'll be a giant drop off. If 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 Liverpool and Chelsea swap spots next year wouldn't shock me at all. No because all, yeah. because that's <clears throat> but that's because they they could have addressed this before it got here, and then they didn't. And they they were going off vibes of hey man, well Klopp, you know, was this this and this. Klopp knew last year he was supposed to leave. I think the, the articles have said his wife convinced him. Yeah, exactly. But Klopp knows, like everywhere he's been, seven years. Because unless you're getting new players that match your system every three years it doesn't work and and no, he wanted Nunez, to buy with these guys yeah but also Nunez like new if Nunez had hit the ground running I could understand doing it but Nunez hit the ground and he was well he hit the stayed ground. on the ground he hit the ground <laughs> and, and so you know you, you we saw a little bit of hope early with with Diaz but then when expectations got put on Diaz's shoulder all of a sudden Diaz was no longer Diaz and Virgil Van Dyke had this resurgence because he wasn't great the year before. And then all of a sudden there's a resurgence. And we was like, wait, but this is Liverpool. And then they turn right back into what they were. And so, you know, it's they, they are who they are. And so they they were they were fortunate to make it where they are. There, there are plenty of games left. So it is is a run possible? Everything is possible. But I, I I I very likely see them sort of um, because they have, if I'm not mistaken, they have the hardest the hardest schedule of of the remaining people. Right? Is that wrong? No, no, they have the middle. You oh. you have the easiest. I have the hardest. They yeah, have the you middle. have the you have the easiest run. Is there really such thing as the easiest in the Premier League after this past weekend? It's just tech, it's just like based on average position. I, I know what you're saying. I know yeah, it's, but, it's kind. But, it's kind of a. It's kind of a. You know, it's whatever. But but because the, the thing is, is uh, my another friend who's a Liverpool fan, and, and we all know this. We, we we didn't just start what we'll start watching the Premier League. We know what happens at the end of the season. We know what happens. I don't know yeah, why Man anybody's City ever shocked trophy. by this. It's come, yeah, it's coming down yeah. to the last Man day. City lift the trophy. They don't that's, want that's what trophy. happens at the end Prim of the doesn't want season. the trophy lifted three weeks early. I'll tell it's you that. Gross. Absolutely. It's flipping I gross and it's it. happening again. So I look yeah. at it, and so Liverpool have their, their Europa League game on Thursday, which it's They're very done. likely they, they they might just lay down. They're done. I think they just might lay down. Unless they catch one early, they're done. I don't see how Atalanta is going to give them three, four. Klopp will go for it. They'll no, go they only for need it. three. They only need yeah, but they'll three. go for it. That's why. Got, that's They'll go for it. They'll go for it. They'll go for it. But I don't. I don't see. There's, Adam there's Adam no away goals. Them. Yeah, there's only three goals. They'll go to but, PKs. They don't care. Again, my point is, I don't see Adelaide. Trust me, they don't care. I don't They'll see them. 
<clears throat> Speaking of, Atalanta has uh, David Zappacosta. I don't know if y'all remember him or not. I yeah, remember man. old Zappacosta. Yeah, man. Chelsea man. Old Zappados. And yeah, then if like 15 years ago, Jesus. Yes, sir. Not that long ago. Hey, man. Hey, man. He's lifted silverware. It was like six years ago. Good grief. Well, there you go. I but, just, uh, I, I don't see it for him. So, you know, um, it, it kind of, I, I just, I think the <clears throat> rock and roll is rocked out. Because, I mean, think about it. They play, the next league game is Fulham. We all think Fulham is is, is, is sort of Jekyll and Hyde. So why wouldn't Fulham take three from him? Yeah. Right? And then you got Spurs, who clearly is there. Villa is there. I, I don't see those two as like walks. Wolves. Like their last three games, I I could see them losing all three of those. Yeah, maybe. We'll definitely see. I definitely uh, I think they'll finish a comfortable third, though. You know, it's not like they're going to plummet and lose every no. game, and someone yeah, like, they're not going to ten points, and someone leaps them. You know, the, so I think they'll be just fine. And speaking of just fine, some absolute bangers in the Man City game. Yeah, Gavardi. Don't di- don't disrespect right. Luton by saying, "Oh, it's only Luton," because Mateo Kovacic with the goal of his life. <laughs> all he hits is bangers, man. That's all he hits. That's insane, dude. I, don't know, I didn't that's know he had it in the locker. Though. He had a goal against Liverpool that was disgusting when he played for Chelsea. Yeah, uh, this goal here was absolutely disgusting as well, man. Um, what you tell me, Lewis? Absolutely crushed him. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, it the start was a little rough, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, Holland missed a goal that he normally would have scored. And then he found a way to deflect it off the defender's face. Finally, City gets a deflection that benefits them, right? And, oh, didn't it? Did the guy bleed? I think he was bloodied a little bit. Yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so, you know, at that point, it looked like, you know, that – the, the, you know, the, the energy was on City's side, but then, you know, there there wasn't much in it, so you just had the one. And then I, I have no idea what happened in the second half, but in the second half they said, you know what? It's done. Let's turn this on. Let's turn and this on. And then they just – and Kova had a fantastic goal, as you said. Um, I, I figured they would give the penalty to Holland because he needed to see the net bulge. And then, you know – Joku, the way Joku ate that man up on his goal, Jesus, that was a nice goal. Jesus, he ripped him up, up, man. Like he had this much space, and he said, "That's fine," and he destroyed them. Destroyed. That's the Doku from the early in the season that we we wanted to see. And Gavardi all says, "Gavardi all's like, I don't have a weak foot, <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't have a weak Do it, bro. foot, bro." Y'all thought Madrid was a fluke. Like my man, my man is just hitting bangers. But this oh, is yeah. around the time when city players start to to understand the system, right? And so Gavardi all came back, you know, and, and and said, "Hey, I'm ready to play." Got an injury. Ake went out, and Gavardi all said, "Thank you." Uh, uh, Walker Walker was back on the sideline, so it's good to hear he, he's back. Stones was rested because he was rested. It was good to see Foden sit down. De Bruyne played pretty well, even though he could have had uh, several assists, but, you know, guys were just not completely on it. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, a win is a win, man. You know, it's there's they, they you guys mentioned this last week or um, in the last podcast that this was the game that City was looking to kind of help correct some goal differential. And it definitely did that for him. And so, you know, we just – we march on. I, I, you got to go one game at a time. That's all that that the focus is. I mean, you definitely have a, the, the huge advantage now for me. Um, I was so pissed because we had – Arsenal had it in our hands and now we've given it to you. You have it in your hands. I mean, I was just perusing your remaining fixtures and – only Tottenham away. But that's the boogeyman, man. 
Only Tottenham away, man. I don't, I mean, maybe Fulham away, maybe Forest away, maybe. Maybe, because they're desperate. Brighton is, Brighton is, man, they're in free fall. They're tired. I don't know, man. You guys are, I feel like you're now heavy favorites. I know you think. I know you're looking at this. Seventy percent favorites now. Seventy. Mm-hmm. It's not a hundred though. It's not a hundred. Right, Lewis? Yeah, man. I mean, I you, know, you guys know how I was last <laughs> year, man. Like in every, and while you didn't know how it was the years before, it it ain't yours until you win. Yeah, it, it ain't yours till you win it, man. Uh, and and the reason I say that, I actually use it uh, sort of a Chelsea thing. I I remember watching the the, the Bayern Munich game with my, my buddy who's a Chelsea fan, and it was over until Drogba said it wasn't over. Legendary and, game, bro. And so I live in the world where it's not over until it's it's over, man. You you gotta let the you gotta let all the sand run out the hourglass. And uh, what would I love? To, to to see them win the league and 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 do historic stuff, absolutely, man. I won't pretend like I don't, but I also will will be different from having. Well, you know, I don't do big head thing, but uh, it's it's just weird because I saw a comment after the the results, and obviously we'll get to the other results after I saw the results, and somebody said, "Book it." By midnight tonight, all the articles will change about how City are cheaters and how nobody wants to win the league and the league is farmer. All of it, and every one of those articles came up today. Every one. Nobody was talking about any of that stuff last week. Well, it's all funny when we lose. It's like players want to leave. We're in financial trouble. I mean, it is like. Oh, we are in financial trouble. That's not going away. <laughs> like, we we I mean, are, not, but you when you win, it. but when you win, you can wax lyrical about cold right. Palmer. We had and to you buy, don't have to think about. We had to buy a whole debt. hotel to 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 average out our FFP. I don't want to hear about our financial. I wouldn't problems. say that out loud. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. <laughs> but 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 the point is, is that, hotels. But that was my point. Two hotels and a mansion. It's he, not it's real. The it's not real financial trouble because if that if you can do that to balance your books, that means they just they're just. It, there's just the legality of it. There's they're another loophole. Oh, yeah. There's there's a loophole. Another like, big one. <laughs> they're That's not a, financially. That is, a, that is a rest center for our players. <laughs> Therefore, I mean, it counts as expenses. We'll take or, it. Or Steve was like, yeah, they're they're compliant. I mean, according to the FA, they're compliant. Who cares how they get there? They're compliant. It's money. They don't care. But, yeah, man. So, And all the articles came out. And it's whatever, man. You know. I, it, you still got to play the games, and you know uh, you got to respect all the opponents you play. Uh, City have a, a, a pretty freaking big game on Wednesday, so you know it. You got to just do one at a time, and that's that's all I got. You know, and there, there's there's nothing more than that. How do you feel about Wednesday? Uh, I feel about Wednesday the same way I felt about last week. You, you, I, I told Jake I couldn't have I didn't have a prediction, and and I don't have one for this one because. I mean, think about how that game went, man. Like, yeah, how do you make a prediction after that? <laughs> yeah, yeah like, like, think how it went. The, the Bernardo goal, you're like, what is that to start the game? And, yeah. then, and then you get the Real Madrid equalizer, and you're like, oh. And then you got Foden saying, hey, man, look, I, I want to be up here in the, in, 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 in the, the Ballon d'Or talk. And then he bangs one. And then, you know, uh, then you just you got Deflection City again. <laughs> And then, then Gavardial is like, no, Kevin, I, Kevin, we missed you. Your food poisoning. I got one for you. And then, you know, then you get a, a worldie from Real. And you're like, just what, what is this? How do you predict this game? Right? Well, how do you predict it? Right? So um, I'm optimistic because, you know, the result that preceded um, the game is good. And the team is getting healthy. And guys look like they're finding some form. So that's 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 – a good sign, but you still got to play the game, man. And you know, until until it's over, it's over. So, how, how much do you think being going top right before, like the set of circumstances, will be just at least a, a boost? 
before going into first the Champions League and then an FA Cup semifinal three four days later. You know, because it's like a, a week a week of like it was okay. Maybe Luton is their third from bottom. They're not the greatest, and you might not have been it completely switched on. But instead, you absolutely maul them, and now you have a massive game versus Madrid and a huge uh, semifinal. You know, at Wembley. You know, four days later, how big is the fact that you handle business? Holland got on the score sheet. Everything was went well. You're top of the table, and now you have just. It's kind of almost a relaxed mentality. The league's kind of taking care of itself now. We can completely switch on for Madrid at home. Well, I don't. I I, I understand what you mean by relax. I wouldn't use the word relax. I would be you. I would use the the um the word you found your groove, right? So this is the groove that you have to be in. This is the mentality where you have to stay in that. It, literally, uh, uh, shout out to Netflix uh, for the, the documentary, but every game- Yeah, but I still play. haven't watched it yet. <laughs> well, you don't really want to watch episode five, but you can watch six and the ones before, and then you'll be fine. But, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm being honest. I, I, I understand empathy. And so, yeah, you, you, you can watch all the other ones around. But I, I look at it and I say, you know, but that's that's the mentality where guys have to be ready to go. Hey, we need to win this game, not because it's the end all be all final. Of course, we're still going to exist. And but we, we got to win this game and we got to play it like we got to win. But we, we don't play with desperation. We play with control that if we play our way, we get the result that we're, we want. And so, you know. Real Madrid is going to come out firing. City will come out firing I, I also. And uh, maybe Wednesday may be another one just like last Tuesday where, well, hell, all the Champions League games were, dates were insane. So maybe we get four consecutive Champions League dates where it is what it is. But like this, if, if we look at it, history tells that last year in week, whatever this is, the same sort of thing happened uh, where, you know, the positions switched and they still, and they had to turn it on and they had FA cup stuff and champions league stuff. So, you know, it's just a matter of what do we need to do to keep be mentally focused and uh, take what's in front of us. The one game that's in front of us, we're not looking at anybody else. Yeah. Well, there you go. Champions mentality from the champions. Go figure that. Speaking of mentality, it's that time. We've come to it. Just the absolute worst part of the show. I just want to tell people on the show that Jake didn't say anything for like an hour and a half. To oh, us. it was, it was, it was hours. <laughs> it was like well, I, well, hours. <laughs> I don't know if you watched my, my match reaction. I haven't. I need to go back and watch it. No, yeah, I didn't. But yeah. uh, I said a few words <laughs> in, in, in my match reaction. Man, I'm gutted. I'm 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 disgusted. I'm I'm shocked. I'm I'm it's it's a real letdown, man. It's a huge, huge letdown. And I hear you, Lewis, one game at a time and you still gotta play the games and you know, um it's it's you know, it's only two points, etc. Man, this feels so devastating. So devastating. And for me, it's not because, you know, oh, we lost a game. Oh, we lost one game in 12 games in 2024. It's the way that everything that happened against Villa... A, shows that, in fact, we have not learned at all. We haven't learned anything. Because Arteta reverted back to last season. He panicked. Panicked. Got desperate. Who the hell knows why? 
who the hell knows what. He plays Kivior and Jorginho against Bayern. And we get destroyed on the counter. And so he panics and thinks, you know what? You know what the answer to that is? To another team who's very, very good at counterattacking with killers up top. You know what the answer? Let's put Kai Havertz in the middle. Oh, I, I'm gonna rip. Let's my bring man. in. Let's bring in Alexander Zinchenko, the yeah. greatest left back Arsenal's ever seen. Let's bring in him against the counter. Let's bring in Kai Havertz to play in the midfield. Again. Uh, This was my this I, my hands and head was pretty much the whole match reaction. I was just every everything I was saying just I just was like losing it. I was just like, oh. Well, how did you feel about having Rice playing as a six? <clears throat> Arteta absolutely unequivocally one hundred percent got the lineup completely wrong. Got the tactics way wrong. There's one. Positive. There's one good thing in our tactical approach. We were getting Kai in behind with runs from deep. What'd you do with it, buddy? The hell did you do with your with your three breakaways? So so when you asked me when you when you asked me whether I would take Kai or or, or would you would you still have him back? This this is why I it's think. not even his fault, man. We know that he needs umpteen chances to score a goal. We yeah. know this. Yeah. You do. I thought this was why I opened with I thought we'd learned. This is why I opened with we haven't learned shit. How have we not learned that Kai Havertz does not play midfield? During the whole tie, I felt like it was... Bro, I just felt like the goal was cheap. You gave away something stupid. You didn't finish your dinner. I'll give you that. You had chance after chance after chance. Y'all just didn't finish your dinner. We were fine in the first half. Played well. You know? Definitely thought we played well in the first half. Um, Should have been ahead. Leandro Trussard. Yeah, he missed the center. What in the hell is it? About you starting games, bro. Yeah. I mean, he's a super sub. We, we talked about this last week. Arteta missed the podcast, bro. Arteta missed the podcast. We just got done talking about this. I mean, proof's in the pudding. What am <laughs> I supposed to say to that? What am I supposed to say? Dog, you choke when you don't start. I mean, when you do start, you choke it. I thought he was okay. Decent in build up, but you can't miss you can't miss from two yards out. He hit him square. Bro, you just he can't made, you can't shoot made, it. You can't hit it right at Martinez. Martinez Tuck that in the like corner. A, yeah. You're right. Tuck it in the corner, man. And this is and, and and we're having a completely different conversation. Completely different weekend of football. Completely different conversations in the media. If Trussard dunks that in. So it's a whole different thing. Everything's different. You just didn't finish your dinner, man. That's the biggest takeaway I took away from this game. They Arteta. sat and countered. They sat and countered like they wanted to. They played a little bit open in the second, towards the beginning. He's had an absolute shocker, Mikel Arteta. He's just had an a- Zinchenko is finished. Finito. Done. He is awful. You know how you know how AC Milan got one on Newcastle when they sold him Tonali? Yeah. This is the kind of robbery I feel like we like Man City has done to Arsenal. <laughs> Zinni, they knew they, they knew that done. they knew that Zinni was gonna do his thing and he was gonna be decent and he was gonna, you know, have some good games, but ultimately he's a 
liability. They knew yeah. that. They knew why that. do you think they sold? Why do you think they sold him? And what is he? What is he? He's an liability. effing liability. And if you and if you oh he did, he does good in the pass and he does good in the build up and he passes ball you know what his position is? What's that? He's a defender. You know what he doesn't do? Defend. <laughs> well, I mean that that's sort of like the whole thing with Kai Havertz. I mean he's supposed to be he's supposed to be a nine. He's supposed to be a striker. What does he not do? Finish right. What Score. do you do well? Knock down the ball and hold it. <laughs> He's a midfielder. <laughs> He's not a midfielder. No. <laughs> bad X. Bad. He's a left back. We all know Kai Havertz. He's a left really back. Left back. <laughs> That's the answer. That's, That's the answer. answer. Bench Zinchenko and put Kai Havertz left back. <laughs> if you play Kai at left back, we'll beat Bayern Munich. Oh, man. I'll be like, what the? Really? Even, 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 right? Tommy, even Tommy Tuchel will see that coming. Dude. It's, well, it's, you have this going for you. You don't have to face Kinsley Coman. He's out. So is Alfonso Davies. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, big. Those, are, those are big losses. But, you know, we'll get we'll get to that. I thought we were decent in the first half. I thought that, you know, we were playing some good stuff, passing it around. We just, just didn't finish, man. And... You know, I thought we were winning second balls. I had them penned in a little bit. And then I, one tactical tweak, like one, they, they stop you from making deep runs, but they hold the ball a little bit better. Now they the win game, a couple the games they, off whack. They win a couple of extra second balls and we're shit all of a sudden. Uh, what? Excuse me, what? Panicked. Panicked. And you know what? Literally everything, literally everything that Arteta has been criticized for grew wings in this game. Stood up and flexed its muscles. He got the lineup completely, ridiculously wrong. Okay, and then it took him 70 minutes. It took him 70 effing minutes to change anything. Bro beans, what in the F? In the 54th minute, I was calling for subs. I knew eight minutes into the second half that we were getting wrecked, that we had not come out of the locker room. I was like screaming at the television, not only to get Zinchenko off the field, I was screaming, get the this man out of my club and I stand by it. Get out because you, sir, are a liability, a disgrace. He's been terrible ever since the Liverpool game, man. He's had a couple of, you know, decent performances, but we he's a he's a passenger. He's a luxury. We do not need you to build stuff up. We don't you're not like this, this incredible Andrea Pirlo passer that we need you to be building up. What are you doing, Arteta? I mean, realize this man cannot defend. He cannot defend at all. And if you were afraid of Ali Watkins, Leon Bailey, and Abu Dhabi and the boys, do what you did in the bye. Yep. Tamiyasu, we have a solution. We have a solution. It's right there. What in the hell are you thinking? He, Zinchenko was so bad. He was so bad. Just misplaced passes all over the place. It, it's it's out of control. And I can't. It's Arteta's stubbornness. It's his stubbornness. His unwillingness to be ruthless. Unwillingness to really look and see at the players that he likes. The people that he likes. When they're shit. He's not, he's not willing. Abba gave him a reason. Ozil gave him a reason. The guys that that suck that aren't giving him reasons to 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 ship him off out of the club, he's just keeping on for, for effing far too long. And you know what? Another thing, the substitutes that you brought in that you took forever to bring in, 
and then, oh my God, to come out and say in that you took Martin Odegaard off because of an injury concern? Bro, bro, we know that you pull some shady crap in the press conferences, Arteta. Don't give me this BS, Odegaard's got an injury concern, bro. What kind of a maniac takes out their captain and best player? It's not even the first time he's done this. How in the hell do you take out your best player 12 minutes to go in a game you desperately need to win to stay on top of the table in a title race that everyone and their mother knows you've just lost because City are not going to lose? That's the pressure. Yep. We know this. We know yep. this. And Arteta absolutely crumbled. Yep. He crumbled under the pressure. Your desperation subs. And you know why it takes him so long? You know why it takes him so long? This is his fault too. You know why it takes him so long to make subs? Look at who he's got on the bench. Look at these mugs you've given extra contracts to. Eddie and Ketia, are you effing kidding me? Emil Smith-Rowe came in for Odegaard. You know, our engine, our brain, our best player, and did nothing. Absolutely F all nothing. And you gave him an extra contract. Where the hell was Reese Nelson? You gave him an extra contract. You gave Eddie and Ketia more of a contract. And you don't trust any of them. You don't trust any of them. It's absolutely clear. He waits till the 77th, 80th minute to make subs because he doesn't trust anyone. But you made the decision to sign all these guys. Arteta's pulled an absolute and utter shocker. An absolute shocking, shocking performance. What is from the, the manager. Um, what's the long-term ramification for you? Oh, I'm not done yet. We're not on. We're not on long terms. We're not even to Wednesday yet. Another, another, uh, another thing that I want to mention: the fans that left the stadium mm. before the game was over. Now, I'm not going to call out each and every one of you. First of all, it makes me super sad. I'll say that it makes me really sad to have seen that. The people who I am going to call out. If you went to other grounds, to the away grounds, and you follow the team, and your ass was singing, stadiums are empty everywhere we go, and you left the team when it was our turn to be down at the end, and you abandoned your team after singing that song, yep. you are the worst hypocrite. Yep. That there that. is. You're an absolute and utter disgrace. So the next time, say we go to Wolves and we're up 4-0 and the Wolves fan starts leaving. Shut your effing mouth. Don't you <laughs> dare sing that song, you filthy hypocrites. Because when our team needed you, when we needed you, the match-going fans, where the F were you? There was 10 minutes left in that game. There was 10 effing minutes left in that game, and I could see the flipping, I could see the cannon in the stands. That's how many effing people had left. It's a, it's a disgrace. It's an absolute and utter disgrace. And if you were singing about away fans being empty and you left that ground, hold your head in shame. Absolute and utter shame. That's a disgrace. You want to talk about Champions League heritage? The Porto fans didn't leave. The Porto fans were screaming while we were sitting there nervous. We were sitting there wringing our hands and you couldn't hear shit. Liverpool are getting cooked for their, uh, their atmosphere at Anfield. We should definitely be getting cooked for not having, for not supporting our team. Because that is bullshit. Everyone plays a part in winning a title. Everyone plays a part in winning a title. Isn't that right, Lewis? We banter and we joke about the empty, empty had and there's being six fans 
you know, but when it's Champions League nights, when it's time to support their team, you know that Etihad is absolutely ridiculous. You don't see City fans leaving when they're down 2 no. Just saying. Well, I, mean, I think part of it is just the fans have been beaten down for so long <clears throat> that they're like, oh, no, here it comes again. I mean, I, I know I know things have changed, but not that long ago, you were on the other side of it all. So I can understand why the fans would feel that way, but I also agree with what you're saying. Don't don't be going and, and chanting, you know, stadiums are empty everywhere we go, and then walk out the door while the game's still being played. I've only left one game, <clears throat> not even a soccer game. We left one game early um, in my whole life. Uh, it was um, – Were the Gamecocks destroying bad. Clemson? It was a very bad Clemson game uh, when we lost to Florida State like 55-14. to 14. Um, it, was, it was bad. I left in the fourth quarter. Uh, that's the earliest I've ever left a game. And uh, because, you know, as a fan, you know, the word fan is, comes from fanatic. You should have a belief in your team that – you know, hey, we still have a, have a chance to get back into this. And I made a comment to my wife when I was watching y'all's game, and I'm like, I don't know why they're leaving. Like, they've won so many games in the 98th, the 97th, the 96th minute this year. All they need is one to fall, and they have a chance to at least get a point out of this. Um, <clears throat> but I also think that, and I mentioned this beforehand, it, that game really felt like the way the Brighton game felt last year at at Emirates. You know, it was just one of those games to where, all right, you've hit the wall. This this is, you know, you're still in it, but this is where things the the worm starts to turn a little bit. Um, and who knows? Maybe maybe City, you know, they they sub their toe and you have a chance to 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 still win it. Um, but it's, it's a different mentality. Like your, your players <clears throat> for a while there were playing like, Hey, we own this thing. And then you draw Bayern, which I think you scored late to tie that one, right? Yeah. So you draw Bayern and it feels like a little bit of doubt started creeping in. Like, okay, maybe maybe we're not as far ahead as we thought we should be. Because, and, I mean, you're a fan, so you can say whatever you want, but I remember you saying, like, hey, I want Bayern. They look terrible right now. We should just blam them. And they come out and they, they shock you. I mean, how else can you put it? They shock you. And that can create a mentality in the head of, like, okay, we can't play free. We've got to we got to play a little bit more on an edge, because you know, in Credit Villa they played fantastic. I, I thought they were very very good in this, and, and I even said I thought they deserved it. Um, had a couple unlucky breaks. You know, could have, but they, could have been five nil. They hit the bar three times. It could have been five nil. Yeah, yeah. You know, they had a couple of unlucky breaks, but you know, I thought they played well and. I just I think it's one of those times in a season where you kind of get smacked in the mouth and you're like, okay, what's next? And maybe y'all come with it on Wednesday and you win three nil at the at, at Bayern and you get all this momentum going again. <clears throat> but I think something like a loss at Bayern, which of course would knock you out of the Champions League. I think it would also be very sobering because it's kind of like, okay, this has happened twice now. And it kind of gets into your head a little bit. That's why we have all these, you know, uh, therapists and whatnot for players because it can, it can snowball very quickly. Um, I think the biggest question though, and, and I've, I've asked this the last two seasons now, you know, Arteta is, it, is he able to take you to that next step? And I I don't think he has the mentality to. And I think it rubs off on your team. And 
I don't know. I, I think when, when the, again, there's the idea of it's easy to win when everything's going well. It's hard to win when everything's not going well. And that's what separates the great managers from the good managers. You know, I can think of multiple times where Jose Mourinho took a Chelsea team that didn't have the, you know, well, I'll even go back further. Thomas Tuchel, I mean, we weren't supposed to win Champions League. And I know, I know Lewis will argue that there was a very major point in that game. Um, that happened, but it was all the mentality. <laughs> like, hey, we're here. We're going to win this, you know? And I, I, I think that comes from the manager and, you know, maybe, maybe we see it on Wednesday, you know, that, that y'all are like, you know, damn the torpedoes. Let's, 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 let's go and shock them. Well, yeah, I have a, uh, I have a lot, a lot to say on that. I think firstly, I agree a hundred percent. It's uh, on the manager, and it's about the mentality. But I kind of want to play a little bit of devil's advocate on what I was saying about the fans. It kind of goes both ways, right? right? So we expected, yes, yes. I said, bring on Bayern. They're they're not playing good. We're playing great. We should wreck them. Now. What none of the Arsenal fans with that philosophy going into that game kind of thought about, and I felt guilty to this as well, is that I thought we had kind of hurdled this, you know, like I said in that video I made where it's kind of like we have imposter syndrome, where we don't believe we're supposed to be here. You know, I thought we'd hurdled that when we beat Porto, but we exhibited it again against Bayern, right? Now, the fans, we don't, we're not going to predict that that's going to happen. We don't want to see that. We don't think that that's going to happen, you know? And so, yes, we were, we're going to smash Bayern because we're playing so well. They're not playing good. Why would we expect our mentality to change? Arteta changed the mentality of the team. Yeah. Whatever happened in his mind, 100%, like you said, comes out in the team. And he's panicking. Mm -hmm. He panicked when it didn't go right in that first half against Bayern. He panicked and switched everything up. And then he's panicking against Villa because he knows the pressure's on. We have to beat Villa. We have to go back top of the table or Man City are going to get in front and we may not ever catch them again. The pressure's on, you know. So... He panicked and he reverted and did something that I thought we'd once again grown out of and realized that wasn't, at, you know, our best. He's gone away because one thing he, he I think it's a little bit of stubbornness. It's a little bit of a lack of self-awareness sometimes with Arteta. He has to realize that just because Kivior and Jorginho didn't work out like they were in the league. Doesn't mean that, and then because of two bad moments that, you know, it was, a, he, what I'm trying to say is that Arteta, he is not, he's not clocking that it's a mentality problem and not a tactical problem because we looked calm in that first half in the league, in the uh, Villa game. We mm -hmm. looked fine. We were calm. We were playing in a round. Willie, uh, Willie Saliba and Gabriel were bringing balls down, trying to keep possession, trying to yeah. do our normal thing. And if we'd have had Kivio and Jorginho in there and stuck with what's been going well, I think it would have been a different game. But he got, he panicked because it didn't work versus Bayern. Right? And so, you know, and I, I, do, I want to do a Champions League segment later so we'll get to this, but I think that the this game is so ridiculously massively important, not only for Arsenal but for Mikel Arteta himself, uh, you know. And so I want to definitely bring, uh, you know, bring a point to that. But I think he got this completely wrong, and uh, obviously it's a, a gut punch. It's a shot to the faith as far as the Premier League's concerned, of course, because you know once again. 
we find ourselves in the same spot we've been in for years and years and years and years. Praying that someone loses, praying that someone else does us a favor. You know, for one glorious week, it was in our hands, you know, and now it's not. And that is why I think most of the Arsenal fan base is so doom and gloom is because when it's, you know, it's no longer in our hands. And when it's in City's hands, they don't normally drop it. I, I, I You got a couple of things. So I, I, I wrote them down, so I didn't forget either. Um, <laughs> so the first thing I, 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 I find that, you know, and, and, you know, I know you say it tongue in cheek. But um, uh, about the, the the league and and the and the, the prem being what it is, but you know, our fates largely are in our own hands. So everyone was given the same opportunity to produce. Some people produce, and others produce less than what they wanted. I mean, to if if that's if that keeps happening, then people have to look at themselves. Now, uh, I, I, there was a point made about the fans and and so i i'm i'm never one to judge fans but i understand your sentiment and i support it but i don't judge them for this reason i remember when i was coaching ball like i coached soccer and and basketball and i remember we we had a really good team and our fans were like lukewarm and i remember going in the locker room and i know players get up for fans and i remember saying to the um to the players because we the, the players had more fun playing on the road than they did at home because the fa- they fed off the fans. They, they they were the fans were booing them and they loved it. And I'm I'm one of those guys who, who, who like the boos because hey man, that means they're still paying attention. And our home fans were like kind of mid, right? And I remember one game we were playing and the, the players actually said something or you could feel the energy where they weren't satisfied with the fans. And I remember saying, F the fans because you play for each other. And that's always been my mentality because the fans, even even if they're lukewarm, even if you have six fans, you're playing for you. And right. so and so I look at that because only you can win the game, right? We can feel it sort of vicariously through you, but we only you as the player can win the game. So I look at it and and, and I'm not gonna say Arsenal fans are spoiled, but I will make this point. Arsenal had has had a history recently in the last 20 years of a lot of success like and i'm i'm I'm, and and i'm I'm talking about like the arson wenger and the history kind of club right arson wenger is one of the best managers to ever do it and when he was there arsenal um uh what is it the gold trophy what's it called invincible invincible yeah the invincibles premier league uh champions uh broke down the, the 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 alex ferguson sort of uh monopoly FA Cup sort of uh, stalwarts where they're always there, and so you're 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 you as Arsenal fans, your history makes you believe. And I'm not talking about you, but I, I'm talking about the fan base in general because United is like this, Liverpool's like this. It makes you feel that you're supposed to not only win, but you're supposed to win in a way where it's supposed to be comfortable. Like it's just yeah, I, I'd agree with you, Check X, the same thing. And so there's a spoiledness from the history side of it and so when you talk about when the fans left and it disgusted you i agree because i look at it and i remember this because i watched this game i can remember what i was wearing where i was at and everything i remember when city was playing qpr and they showed united go up and not one city fan left that stadium and they were down not one left and united had a banner it was 35 years that City had not finished above United. And they kept changing it every year. And City fans had zero reason to stay in that, in, in that stadium. They hadn't won anything. United were juggernauts at the time. And they, they walked it, right? And City had bottled a, a, a game against them. They, they, they busted them in the head, but then they had bottled some games during the season. Mancini was there, and they weren't really sure about his, his style and his method and his tactics. And they are like, is Mancini the right guy? And, and 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 you look and you say they didn't leave because the guys on the field recognize we're, we're not quitting. And so you look and you have to understand that in every game, in every moment, you're always proving yourself. If your players don't have the mentality that you're always proving yourself in the moment, then you're you're going to get stuck in the history of, well, we're the champions. Well, I mean, sure, we're the champions, but we got to do it all the time. And champions are, are not champions the next year because they exist. So 
if you think about it, if we think about this, and I'm not, I don't play for City, but this is my personal mentality. During this whole season, you've you've never once heard me profess or say that City has been a champion at all during the season, not one time, because we haven't won anything, and because they haven't won it, and until it's done, it doesn't matter. If you remember last year, I didn't say anything until it was confirmed, because what is there to say? And the thing about it is, I prefer to say things that I, I believe are truths. And truths are, can be proven, right? So if, if we look at it and we recognize that every chance is a chance to prove yourself, then I look at City's history to get where they are now. And, and people can say, well, we don't like it. But the thing about it is, if we remember, Pep Guardiola was going to be a flop in the league. Kevin De Bruyne was an overpriced fraud. The, who, who, who is this Phil Foden guy? Why are you playing him? Playing out of the back doesn't work. And they stuck with it. And they recognize that every single game, they have to prove it to themselves. And if the other team capitulates, great. If the other team gives them a fight, we like that because now we can prove that our system works. And because we believe it, our system works. Now, I'll give you the point that Arteta has this sort of, uh, he, he, he bends when the wind blows a little too hard. And, but I think that's something you have to learn. Because Pep, in, and again, in, in, shout out to Netflix, in the documentary, he said to himself in the Champions League final, because he remembered the Chelsea one, and I don't take anything from Chelsea. Chelsea earned net. You got to score the goals. City didn't score the goals. Chelsea scored more goals. The game result was the result. But Pep said in the halftime of that game, he said, I was too hard on them. I went at them in a way, and they didn't respond to me. So in this final, I recognized and I knew the character – and personalities of my players. So I changed and I didn't come at them the same way and they found it on their own. You have to let the players do it and figure it out because yes, you are a reflection of your manager, but at some point, one of those 11 guys on the field have to be like, hey man, cut this crap out. Now, City was fortunate in 93-20 moment, Vincent Company was there and he said, hey man, I'm playing this ball forward. He plays it forward. Balotelli has his only city assist ever. <laughs> but everyone is going to the goal. And Aguero's like, you know what? If I don't shoot it, nobody else is going to shoot it. Everybody said, this is my moment to be great. And I'm just saying that I think if, if the players took that mentality, then I think you get different results. Now, it's my hope that City maintains that mentality because that's what it looks like. Because everything they did last year, if they did it this year, it would be new. Like, it wouldn't be the same as last year. It would be new. So you have to recognize that everything you do new is new. So that's your making history. So if I'm going to be history in the moment FC, that's what I prefer to be than history long time ago FC. But – I, I agree with your assessment about the fans. I, I agree that Zinchenko has, has, but, but, but you knew that, uh, and I'm not sort of being that guy, but you knew that when you bought him, he wasn't a defender, just like you knew what Gabriel Jesus was when you bought him too. You knew what both of them were when you bought him. No, no, no one sold you a bill of goods. <laughs> you knew what yeah. you was getting. Oh, for sure. For sure. I'll say two things. One, this particular team, this particular group, what they have proven in their mentality is they need support. They need positivity from the fans. It just is what it is, man. Like, this is the new age of this kind of stuff, you know. And that team, this group of players, seeing the fans have kind of abandoned them like that, I think was really, really damaging. It was, damaging. Old, man. That's it was not, not cool. good. <clears throat> not good. And secondly, I agree 100% with your idea that, <clears throat> you know, the whole, you know, Pep kind of realized, you know, they're going to find it on their own thing. And, and I really hope that someone steps up for Arsenal. Somebody becomes that guy for Arsenal. Somebody, you know, realizes that, you know, at some point – there's going to come a moment, you know what I mean? And I haven't told many people this, but at halftime of my senior year of high school soccer, and this is the last, this is the last real competitive game I ever played. Right. Because like the beer league in Charleston is while it's fun, it's, 
not exactly, you know, this was the game. This, this was the last game where like my heart and soul and everything I had was in it. You know what I mean? And we're down two nil at halftime. We, we went down two nil in the final of the, in the state final two nil in like 12 minutes, mm. you know, and we got to halftime at two nil and we, we had a coach that, shout out Jason Hamill, by the way. He's still coach of uh, the Academic Magnet High School. Um, he had yelled at us before. He had given us the hair dryer before. You know, we, we, we'd seen that from him before, but it wasn't like his go-to, you know. But at halftime, all he had for us was, I mean, he had a couple of tactical things, but at the end of it, he was like, somebody's got to be a hero. Someone has to step up and be the hero. And I think that just like in City's history, you'll look back and you'll see the moment, the 92-20, that kind of sparked their rise and everything. And I think this Arsenal team needs a moment. And, you know, uh, I think we're going to switch this around and I want to transfer transition into the Champions League right now because this game against Bayern Munich is for me the most important game in Mikel Arteta's life in Mikel Arteta's yeah, entire career that's not what I'm saying in his entire career as a player as a manager this game versus Bayern is the biggest game in his career, in his life, because we've talked about what his legacy is, right? Almost. We've dis we've discussed right now what his kind of people think of him as a manager, and it's that he he bottles it. It's that he panics and throws stuff away in the end, in the run in, right? With the mentality that this team has shown, Patrick, you said it earlier. I think you're 100% right. If we lose to Bayern, if we go out in a, like a bad fashion, we might just fall. We it could be we could capitulate. It could be really a really really long end to the season, like a really bad end to this season. That is what we've shown. That's the mentality that Arsenal has shown. That's what we know we can do is have a couple of bad results and then absolutely throw away the rest of the league. We've shown we can do that for sure. So if we go to if we go to Germany and get embarrassed and then lose another couple of games before the end of the season, which could very possibly happen. Say here here's the worst case. Say we lose to Bayern, get embarrassed, and then go and lose the league at Tottenham. Oh, oh! Like that's like that's the loss that that's loses the, the league. That's the nightmare. Arsenal fans will be absolutely furious. But what's so bad about it, man, is that I don't think the Crunkies will fire Arteta, even if no. we have an embarrassing oh, no. end, an no. embarrassing end to this season. But Arteta will be the one that he'll be remembered as the guy that can't get it over line. I'm so effing sick of almost. I'm so sick of almost. I'd rather be in sixth. You know what I'm saying? Now. <laughs> get out of here, bro. You're, you, you, yeah, whatever you're smoking. Why don't you, why don't you bring me some? Because good grief. Well, you enjoy I, your I, sixth I get place. what he's saying, though. I think it's, seventh. it's the expectation. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Like I know, I know we're probably not gonna make it, but I would, I would hate to hold on to the last four weeks of the season being like, I, no, I'll take here. being the bridesmaid no, than being no, a guest here. in the crowd every day. Every day I take yeah. the bridesmaid. There's no way. I don't There's know, man. No yes, man. You can have some fun in the crowd. Can't be Look, too bad. Can't do too much. I think stuff that. As a bridesmaid. I think that this could be. Like it's so it's so pivotal. Like. If yeah. we go, say we go to Bayern oh, and, shit, and right? have some kind of dramatic last minute 
Pacayo Saka banger that sends us into the semifinal. And it's just an absolute shot in the arm. And we go on to massacre everyone else that we play this season. It, you know, and, the, and it, it, either way, it's going to affect the league. Mm. I think that there's a world where we go to Bayern and we play great 2-2 two, two to pens and we lose in penalties. And like, it's a kind of a positive. It's, it's, it's still gut wrenching, of course. But it's not like, oh, we just took a 4 nil and it wasn't even like a, you know, and now we're going to go to way to Wolves and lose 1 nil and it's just over. Nefo you know, I think if there's a world where we go to Bayern and we just come up short, that it's still like, okay, you know. But as far as Arteta getting it over the line, I'm worried. I'm terrified. If I see Zinchenko in this team sheet, I'm flying to Germany, like X says. So, so, so my question is, is that if – so say, say you get rid of Arteta, who's the replacement? Look, man, this is the question that you always get. This is the question that always comes at you when you say, oh, fire the manager. Yes, the manager market is in the absolute gutter right oh. now. Potter, I get, baby! I Potter. get that. But, I mean – is that is that is that where we're at? All right, let's just wait till Pep leaves. Is that where the is that where the rest of the league really is? Is that what you're telling me? I don't see Arteta leaving Arsenal, bro. Even like y'all aren't gonna get the Crunkies won't fire him, and if he ain't stepping are, it, down. It does not matter if y'all don't win anything. If y'all could just get back to top four, that's a no, win that, in their boat. That's you're 100 right. Boat. The Crunkies will accept top oh. four. For Absolutely. the rest of ever. For the rest, the rest of, of forever. Because <laughs> that makes them – that puts them in the positive every year. <laughs> but as far as my belief in Arteta – Yeah. Well, you yeah, know, yeah, it's, I, I it's think, shaking. <laughs> I think the, the issue is and, – and you made mention of this the other day. I, I don't remember if it was during the game, after the game, or what. <clears throat> but, you know, he hasn't put you in situations – for y'all to succeed in these types of moments, you know, with with the whole thing with um, sporting last year, you know, you lost some penalties, um, and I think there was another one uh, uh, year before last or whatnot. But you know, and I think that's I think that's an issue going into this. That said, I I don't think you get destroyed by any means if anything i think it's like a 2-1 you know they score like 80th minute to to take the lead kind of thing um which you can take something from that but you can also be like ah oh, miss chance it depends on how we approach the game it 100 percent depends on how our tech approaches the game yep well i mean i figure i figure we don't see rice as a six for one or the, the, I mean, no, definitely not. I think we see parte. Uh, see, I one hundred percent think we have to see parte. Yeah, and and that was one thing I was going to ask. Like, why did he not play? Is he just is it just a concern of him being injured that it's too too important for him to to not play or what? Here's what I'm hoping. Here's what I'm praying. Because it's damn the torpedo time. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's no, oh, he's got a niggle. We need to save him. No, there's no saving people now. If they, if they can play, if, look, if Parte 75% started, yeah. it's time to gamble, baby. It's, it's th all the chips on, all the cards on the table. I want to see Martinelli. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Saka, Partey, Rice, Odegaard, effing Tomiyasu. For f for 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 the love of all that's holy, if I see Zinchenko in this team, I'm gonna to have to go outside so I don't put holes in walls. You know what I'm saying? Like so holy that. hell! And you know what I want to see? I want to see what we did at Man City. F it. I don't care. Call us call us Jose Mourinho. Call us 
park the bus, whatever. What? I, I want to park every train, every plane, every bus, every car that it takes us to get there. Park it right in front of that goal. Make Bayern break us down. Yep. They can't break. What, what did Dortmund do? I've gone back and I've watched a lot of that game. Dortmund just, oh, no space. You're not getting in behind. You're not doing anything. And when you give us the ball, we're going to punish you. Mm-hmm. It only takes one, man. It only takes one. Just sit back. Sit so far back. Because if you're not going to do that and you're going to press farther up the field and make them play long balls, win Sonic. the second. Right win by. the right. second ball. You have to win this. It, it's You have to win the second ball. If you're going to play like that and open, you can't lose the second balls. You just can't because you we, we will get wrecked. So that's why I'm calling for classic, straight up Jose. Can we can we bring him in as a consultant for just this game? For for a couple of practices? Oh, you know, he, show he, us show he, us the he, OG park the bus. That's what I want. He he consult with y'all. Yeah, is, is, come is on. That your, is that your replacement for Arteta? Jose, f no, good God, no, Jesus! <laughs> I would take Jose back in a heart. Oh my God, y'all are crazy. No, that's not that's Arsenal. Don't that's not that's not the Arsenal. You know, that's not the Arsenal way. It's not how we play. It's how we play this game. But in order to win the Champions League, it doesn't matter how you play. It doesn't matter. Yes, performance. You want to see great performances, and performances matter in the league because you have to put thirty-eight of them together to win a league. We need one. We need one game, one win. How did Champions League? How did Chelsea win both their Champions Leagues? Was it free flowing, tiki taka, pass it around you football? Gridlock no. that game, make them play no. a midfield battle. Did Drogba? How many touches did Drogba have in that game? Three. No, he, he had four touches. Had a bunch. He had a bunch because he was playing. He was like playing by himself. I'm yeah, just saying, only, like he was—he was the only launch at nine, knock it down. That's the only game. Can we? The whole can time. we get like 13 guys behind the kit? Get? No. Can we like sneak dudes onto the field? Let's, no. Dudes popping up out of out of the holes in the turf and slapping the ball and Daniel going. Like, Vieira has a, has like, a purpose for once. <laughs> yeah, I want everyone behind the ball the whole time. I'm talking <laughs> about exactly what we did to Man City. I don't. Yeah, like. You know, so I think that's the only way that we're going to be like comfortable enough with the atmosphere is just don't don't let them through, and we'll worry about scoring if we get a nice counter, you know, opportunity. You know, let them have the ball, let them dominate possession, and make them break us down. Uh, you know, and I fully expect that to be uh, the complete opposite, Lewis. Of what we're going to see at the Etsy head. What you telling me about uh, it's Wednesday. We're both playing on Wednesday. What do you think? Yeah. About? You nervous? Excited? Um, I don't, I don't know if I have a word. I just, I'm, I'm anticipating, you know, I'm, 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 I'm anticipating the lineup and then I'm anticipating playing. I mean, I think the, the city players believe they belong playing against Real Madrid in this current time. Because while they they were the Galacticos and it looks like in the future they're building the team to be Galacticos again, uh, I think City can go toe to toe with them, and they they did it in the last game. But you have to do it in the present game. So uh, while I, again I have no prediction of the scoreline, just like the last game. Uh, uh, my, my my desires for them to win, so I'll just leave that there. Do you expect it to be open like the last game? Yeah, they they, but I, I told you, City loves when teams play like that, and Real Madrid and the way Carlo manages, they like playing like that too. So I don't think you're gonna get anything different. I think you're gonna get the, you're gonna get the continuation. This will be minute ninety one. <laughs> and forward for for um the last game. I think that's what you'll get. That's exciting, man. I'm I'm oh, yeah. it, it's good. I mean tomorrow the funny thing is tomorrow, as a supporter it's exciting, but it's not because it's the same way I talked about the Chelsea game where it, and this one is different, so I'm not knocking Chelsea, but 
the Chelsea game was poor quality, right? That like the, the, the eight goals is just like was like, what is this? The the, the yeah. City Real Madrid <laughs> game was was quality. Epic. And Epic. so I, I think you get quality in this one, but as a as a as a supporter of one of the teams, you're like, man, do do I want to watch this? Yes, I do, but just not so close, right? Just not so close, right? Yeah. Oh, I feel that. Um yeah, man, I think it will be. I think it will be open. If uh KDB will probably be back. It was just like some food poisoning or whatever, wasn't it? From the last Yeah, well game. he played the last game, so he's fine. Oh, he's fine. Okay, good, good, good. He did. Yeah. Um anything different? Do you think it'll just run back the same lineup? No, I don't think they'll run the same lineup. So it's weird because this is another manager thing and tinkering, right? So uh, I expect Ederson to start. Even though Ortega started the last game, I expect Ederson to start this one because Ortega will have the set the um, the, the weekend game, and because that's the that's the FA Cup and he's the cup keeper. So I think Ederson will go back into goal. Um, Diaz, Jesus, <laughs> Diaz and Stones. Yeah, I'm being honest. I I, I like I like Kanji man, but I think he's going to start Walker. I don't want him to, but I think he's going to start Walker. Is um, Ake still hurt? I know I asked you about Ake. No, Ake is back. Too. Everybody's back. Everybody's okay, back. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think Gavardiol is too hot right now, so I don't think. Yeah, you got to start Gavardiol. So I think Gavardiol will start the game. So I think the back line is them. Obviously, Rodri, who got a rest, will start. Uh, De Bruyne will start. Uh, Bernardo, Foden, don't know where they will in, be located, but Bernardo, Foden, Holland, and it's just one player left. And uh, it's Jack. Gotta be. Oh no, there's no question. It's Jack, man. It's Jack. Yeah. Gotta be. That I Absolutely. think that's the lineup. I think I'm not saying the lineup picks itself because Doku had a hell of a game, and Alvarez looks like he's starting to find some form. But you gotta play. You gotta play the guys who who do the work and they get you there. And those guys will come on and they they will help sort of alter. The, the pace and add some change and stuff like that. But I think you go with that 11. That's, that's the best 11 right now. Yeah. Fair enough. What's tell me guys, what do you think? Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to both of these games. I think they're going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm interested to see um, Tyson versus Fraser, bro. Battle from, from what, we saw from last week to this week. I think that's the one really exciting thing about the um, the quarters is that we get that tactical battle, and it's not over a three week span. It's like okay, we did this this week. We got to do this this week. Um, you know, I'm interested to see what Arteta comes with. Uh, it's going to be an absolute cauldron um, there in Iron for sure. Oh yeah. Um, I'm scared. <laughs> They'll be doing their chants and jumps and all that. I mean, it's it's extremely, extremely intimidating. Um, but it is not a place that you can't win at. And that's the one thing that you kind of have to go in with is you can win here. And, you know, I think that that is the mentality that y'all take on. I just think in the end – it's just going to be a little too much. Uh, you know, if y'all were going with a goal, I would have felt more confident in y'all pulling this off. Um, you know, cause there's goals in this. So this is not one of those where you're like, yeah, who's going to score? Like there's goals in this. Um, what I saw out of Sané last week Facts. was, was one of those things where I'm like, mm, I don't know if Arsenal can really, if we just don't give him any space, yeah, no, I mean, no space. Yes. <clears throat> but and again, you don't have to face Coman. I mean, that and that's big in itself because he'll just run you to death after. Some no Davies, no Davies is big as well. No Davies is huge, absolutely huge. That should open up things for for Saka. Um, you know, and is he hurt? Who? Yeah, I think he is. I think he's playing hurt. Who's he limps off every game. Yeah, he limps yeah, off yeah. every single game. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I heard a couple weeks back something about an Achilles, a little something, yeah. something, but 
who knows, man? He's he he seem he does seem like he's playing hurt, but maybe no Davies will. Uh, he'll have. I mean, that should open that. some things up for sure. Um, I don't know who who goes in replace there. Um, I don't. I don't know either. I need to look, but um, yeah, I, I just think it's going to be like a two-one. Um, I think they find a goal late to to kind of end it. I think on the city side, I think we're going to see an absolute just classic. Um, I think it actually goes to extra time and city scores an extra time to advance. Um, you know, I think it's two, two going into extra and city wins three, two. Um, and then the Tuesday matches, you know, we, <clears throat> we're all excited because of, um, you know, Arsenal and, and city cause we follow them <clears throat> our own teams. But I mean, PSG Barca. It's gonna be uh, epic, dude. That's gonna be so I, epic. That's gonna be. I, 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 I need to go. So you gotta look up. I need Mbappe to to pull a madness. I want to see it. That's what I'm to see if he pulls. He pulls just absolute magic. Um, it's not at the Bernabeu, or not the Bernabeu, but uh, Camp Nou, um, or the new camp. But I, I'm I'm interested to see if he pulls absolute magic. Um, it will endear him to the Real Madrid fans to begin with 50 times. Yeah. No doubt, um, no doubt. And then the uh, do we second- think do, do we think Dortmund has a chance? It's two one. Everybody, everybody has a chance, man. It's it, it's the yellow wall. I know you love they the yellow wall, Patrick. Yellow wall, they? Ooh. man. You know, I saw a little bit of that game and uh, Eddie Adam uh, Demier or whatever. Love him Add the yimmy. Add the yimmy. Yeah, I love him as a player. Uh, I always buy him on FIFA when I can. Um, <laughs> but he seemed to have been uh, giving them some problems. Uh, interested to see the tactical switch there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's hard to go the yellow wall and win. It really, really is. Like, joking about, you know, the Bayern fans jumping and chanting. When you see a whole stand just jump at the same time and come down, <laughs> it's a little, like little like twenty five thousand in one stand, like that's that's insane. Um, but yeah, it's. I thought I thought that the Champions League group stages were a little boring, um, for various reasons. But I will say these quarters have been. Fun. I fully expect him to be fun again tomorrow and, and Wednesday. And I'm excited to see who we get to the semis. Uh, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a show one way or the other. Absolutely. What you thinking, X? You think uh, Mbappe is gonna do some magic? Pull some of that World Cup form? You know, you can't count him out. It's just what I was trying to talk about. My boy Eden. He's got that X factor, man. You never know. He's just got that. I can pop up at any moment and I can be great and it will be great. It'll be one after another if it needs to be, but it, it's, I think they really, really, really showed and gave their hand away losing a home man. Yeah. They got ground to make up in Barcelona. Tough. That's tough, tough, tough. different than being level. That's the, to make up ground. There is my but word. But it's for not that. at the new camp. Like Dortmund get to go. Dortmund get to go back to Dortmund, <laughs> making up ground in Dortmund. That's what I give them. And like I see them tying this leg and taking that to PKs. I see. So would Mark you say Holmes Paris saving off, it, staying one ahead of Paris? Like you know they're gonna give goals. It's just staying one ahead of them. I think it's so do you think Paris are goals. least likely to go through of all the teams? Yes. If I had to, if I had to take a bet on all of them, it's Paris. Just because Dortmund are at it's home. Paris, y'all, Dortmund, but yes, it's Paris, Whoa. y'all. Only Dortmund's at home. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! That is shots fired, bro. I the city, the Chelsea just because this city Madrid, no, time. no, it's just 
It's just because the city draw is so close. I don't know who, and I wouldn't, and I wouldn't call it. Like I just don't know who to call. I think Madrid plays. But you think well, Bayern are an overwhelming favorite? Is what it sounds like. Heads in. Because Bayern, because you have to look at it though. The reason why I'm going this way is because same reason for Dortmund. Bayern get to go back home. But it's back a draw. We're not level. down. We're not wow. down. I would say you're down one going into. No. You needed to be up one going into 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 uh, Bayern Munich. Yeah, into the Allianz. Are you kidding me, bro? We've got it's, it's in, in it's, it's it's in there somewhere. It's in there. It's, <laughs> it's in there somewhere, man. I'm telling you, deep down. Just let me in the locker room. Let me fly I to mean, Germany I, I really, and give the win one for the Gipper. You know, it, it's funny too because like. My affiliation to y'all runs way further back, but I love Tuchel too much to like root against him. So, wow. Well, according to wow. the news that uh, Nagelsmann will be returning <laughs> to Bayern Munich to be their manager next season, which is interesting. Good they job. Hey, we'll take Tuchel go. back too. We'll just do a yeah, spin. just just re- just <laughs> run back three seasons ago. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, run man. back twenty twenty one. The, the, talking about the, the the next two games, like I think I think Paris wins. I think Mbappe does Mbappe things. Uh, but would it but it would it shock me if Bar, uh, Barcelona came out? No, it wouldn't shock me. But I think I think Mbappe is like, hey, I'm gonna show you in Barcelona because hey, this is what I'm gonna be doing next year whenever I come here. And so I think that's his motivation. Um, I think Atletico, it wins the game. I know the yellow wall is something serious, but I think just Simeone knows what he's doing. He's done it before. They're tough, man. They're, they're, they'll just grind you out. You know, we're talking, tough you were talking about you know, Arsenal needing to grind out a win. Like, that's what Atletico does. They, they grind yeah. you out. Yeah, they're, they're tough. And now the Arsenal one, I'm going to be honest, I find this one very difficult to call as well. Because for the following reasons, when we talked about it first, I didn't think Bayern was good and I thought Arsenal would win the first game. And then Arsenal, I don't know what happened, but it was, they, 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 they got, it's the diving that I didn't like. Like that mentality of like hoping the referee saves you was something that I, I just was like, what is that? And the referee for sure is not saving them in Germany. So, and, and so with that said, I think I think that, that game, uh, X, I think no, Patrick said, um, hold up, I'm pointing the wrong way. There, hold up, this way. There you go. Patrick <laughs> Patrick said um, he, he thinks that the City Real Madrid game will go to extra times. I think I think the Arsenal game goes to extra time as well. I have no idea what the result is, but I think it goes to extra time. Well, I'm looking at I'm looking at odds here. Um, looks like that Arsenal is a slight. Favorite, they've been a favorite the whole time. They've favorite. That home. is rid- See, the bookies don't. They don't think about mentality. Um, how are we favorite? Madrid lost Madrid the Villa. A favorite. City's a favorite, and Barcelona's a pretty big favorite. I might, I might have to lay a wager down if, if uh, this is, this is, that's weird. Or three sixty-five. Sorry. I actually, that's not my favorite one, but we won't talk about that on on uh, on stream. Yeah, not not my favorite app, but uh, but yeah, man, I think uh, I think it's super close. All four of them, either way, very 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 close. And uh, I know I'm absolutely pumped, absolutely looking forward to uh, all of it. I'm gonna be definitely simulcasting tomorrow, and then uh, I will have both games on Wednesday. But uh, you know where my focus will be. I do want to bring one more thing up before we close out the episode, just because I like, I have to end on something happy, you know, for me at least, because it's been a sad, sad weekend. I just wanted to give a little update on the predictions league. There's been some movement, gentlemen. Rut row looks like somebody's made a comeback. <sighs> looks like somebody's made a comeback. At least, at least someone's getting something over on a city fan this season. 
Oh, that's where Where's I finished. Be careful, bro. I'm coming for you. Uh, oh yeah, you, dude. You, you, you're thirty. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a tight race here at the top of the Cup Chasers Predictions League, and uh, of course, Patrick. The table, the it's a mid yeah. the, Patrick, the, the Man City of the Cup Chasers Predictions League, still cruising up there at the top. Nope, nope. A lot of points still be earned, so. See, Lewis, Lewis's rhetoric has a, has infected you here. This one game at a no, time. Remember, remember last year, one, I, predi one prediction at a time. And I picked against Chelsea to win. I mean, it was it hurt <laughs> off my heart, but I ended up winning because of champ. It. But you did it. That's the difference. Why you're in first and I'm in last? Because you did it. Because <laughs> you'll never vote against never Chelsea. Because I'll never do it. I'll never <laughs> do it. Hey, I wanted to say real quick. Well, I'm in last uh, I hold up, Chelsea Isak win every week. Or, uh, uh, Alexander Isak, like my man, having an incredible yeah. season. Um, I was, absolutely. I was reading something, and everybody's talking about Tony, and they're talking about this guy and that guy. Like, why is nobody talking about Isak? Like, at this point, I would love him at Arsenal. That'd be great. I, I I'm hearing, I'm hearing him. talks of, talks of, uh, you know. Given on revives and all this and that, so uh, maybe that's just because he wears fourteen. But I like him. I well, like him I saw lot. that um, uh, West Ham's in for Tony now. Oh like my they're God, the leaders. Bro. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I saw that Tony was only going to cost thirty five. Thirty five forty. Yeah. Yeah, that's who nothing. knows, man. Who knows what's going on? If Tony costs thirty five and Arsenal don't scoop him up, we're idiots. Just going to throw that out there. <laughs> you can throw that out there right now, but uh, but yeah, man, I'm I'm pumped about the uh, the Champions League. Of course, I'm nervous, excited, terrified. The Allianz is going to be crazy. The City Madrid game is going to be epic. Uh, big up Chelsea for the six nil victory. Of course, got a big FA Cup semi final next weekend. But of course, we'll get to that on Thursday. Thursday show right, should folks. be awesome, people. We got, it we should, got Champions League, we got predictions, fun. we got FA Cup. Like, come on! Absolutely. Get the notification bell on so you know when that's coming. And, of course, get the likes up on the video and subscribe if you're new. We certainly appreciate it. We are on our way to that magical 1,000. We are certainly grateful you're here. Thanks for listening, and you will see us next time.